I know Rabbi Newhouse has embraced it. Yeah. It's a little more in depth, you know, because we're going to rush. Yeah, you know, I think he's. He's got a little tater over there. Yeah. Bursting is a good meal. It is a good meal. He texted me this morning. He said a little after uh, recording in progress. Five Bittle Tori says to me, It's not me because I'm in Shul since 5 in the morning. You're not many on me. And... All right, the boy Ty. Let's get the stand over here. We'll do a little doubt for you and me. Oh, Shem. Well, look, Hashem is right. Yeah. I think our learning brings us to what, Kabit? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm the bottom of Okay, the boy Ty. Give me a little bit of Kabit. My second dedicated to the Lord's Day. The Lord's Day. Amen. 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 So you have a dog and you have a gedi, goat. Mm-hmm. And they jumped and they broke kelim. So if they broke it in the direction of mata lemamis, they jumped up. So then peturim, because that's considered a shidui. And we know a shinui is under the category of keren. And therefore, they have to pay hatsi nezik. When it says peturim, it doesn't mean peturim negamre. It means peturim for paying full nezik. They would pay hatsi nezik like a tam. Uh, but if they damage going up to damage, they jumped and they broke the kelim hayabim. Because that's already considered a normal damage. They broke with their uh, body. And that would be a toda of regil, which is the normal way the damage. But if it's a man or a chicken that jumped, so we said that uh, a chicken is uh, it's the way to damage in any direction, going up to down or down to up. And a human is always obligated. Like we said many times, Adam, Mu'ad, the Ulam, person is always responsible for his for his behavior. So the Gemara says, but we have a right that it contradicts this. says, You have a dog, and you have a gidi, a goat, that jumped on Kilim and broke them. Ben lemata, ben lemata, lemala, whatever direction, they are piturim. And that's a problem. We just said over here that when they're going from uh, lemala, lemata, they're hayab. Now it says over here they are patur. So we have a stira on the we're talking about over here where the animals that we're discussing, namely the dog and the gedi and the goat, they changed from their minhag. They changed from their minhag. So the dog uh, jumped in one in one shot. The dog usually doesn't jump in one shot. He usually scales the wall you know, slowly. The Gidi jumps. So we're talking about over here, he went lemala lemata, but he did it in the way of a Gidi. He did it in one shot. And that's considered a Shinui for a dog. Begadya b'slicha. And the Gidi actually scaled the wall, which is not his way, that's the way of the dog. The way of the Gidi is really to jump in one shot. So since they change from their normal way, they are going to be peturi. Gemara continues, Yahi, am I peturi? So why they patur? Which means it should be high of Hatsi Nezik. It's considered a Shinui. And the Gemara says, yeah, that's what we meant. Patur Menezik Shalem, Bahayabim, Bahatsi Nezik. We just meant to say that they patur from full Nezik, but they pay Hatsi Nezik. And the Gemara continues. And Caleb Shinatas. And this we saw already a few times. The dog that took a Harara. What's a Harara? The biscuit. Remember, we said under the biscuit there was a fire, exactly a coal. And we learned in the Mishnah that if the dog lit the gadish on fire with the uh, with the biscuit, so the owner of the dog is high have to pay hatsi nezik. We understood that because that's considered sedorot, because uh, it's indirect, which is not a direct damage. The dog uh, put the fire on the ground, and the fire went out and damaged, so then we pay hatsi nezik. Itmar of Yohanan, a famous, famous Gemara, when a person is obligated to pay 
because of Ish, because of the Mazik of Ish. That's one of the four Mazikim we learned on that bed. One of them is called Ha'ev Hev'ev. So the question is, Ish, what is the reason why the Torah is Mechayev? So one rabbi says, Mishum Chitzav, that's a Yohanan, Isho Mishum Chitzav, Ish like Ishamar, Isho Mishum Mamono. Let's read the sheet. Isho, second line, Hashole Adabera, you said the fire rod, Mishum Chitzav, or Chitzio. Hayavo Hakatu, Diu Kaabi, Dabi Kizure Kets. They look like he shot an arrow. So just like when you shoot an arrow, it's, it's your co op that did it. Similarly, when you send the fire, it goes out of your possession, which means the fire goes on its own, but it's the same dynamics as sending out your arrow. Nobody would argue that if somebody shot an arrow, no one's going to say, well, uh, you know what, you're not Hayab. Of course, the one that put his co op into the arrow, that's going to be the one that's going to be Hayab. So similarly, when you send the fire out, it's working from the mechanics. It is like you sent your arrow out to damage. And the next rabbi says, no, mamono. It's considered your money that damaged. What does that mean, your money? Kishoro, uboro, just like your ox, or just like your, 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 your board. Uh, now, what would be the nafkamina between whether you hold it's kitsyo or it's mamono? She says in the fourth line, Dika benan kigon, shedlik begachelet sheeno shelo. Let's say I took a, a coal that doesn't belong to me. So if you say it's because of my mamon, that's not my mamon. I don't own it. But if you say it's Mishum Chetio, so what do I care who, who belongs to? Bottom line, it came from as a result of you. And therefore it's going to be Hayah. That's what the Gemara is thinking the Napkamina is going to be. So the Gemara, before we get to that, comes along and says, Why does Yishtakish not say like Rabbi Yohanan? Why didn't he say it's like your arrow? It's true. The arrow actually comes from your koa. You actually uh, uh, um, shot it. And if it has your koa, I love the The fire doesn't go from your koa, it goes on its own. And therefore, it, that cannot be the uh, the logic. Uh, the, 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 therefore, he says the reason is because it's your mamon. Why doesn't the Yohanan say it's mamon? Money has, it's tangible. Hi, let le mamasha. But this flame that's mazik does not have mamashu to call it your mamon. And therefore, he looks at it as it is because of a uh, chetz. Now we have a question. We learned in our Mishnah, you have the dog that took the biscuit and he went and he lit the gadish. So we said, on the gadish, you pay how much? Hatsi nezik. So uh, uh, the Gemara comes along and says, If you come along and say the reason why Esh is Hayab is because it's like uh, you shot an arrow. So now we understand why the dog has to pay for the uh, for, for, for the Esh that is uh, his his dog uh, it's the it's the arrow of his dog. But the dog belongs to him, although the fire didn't belong to him, right? The fire belonged to somebody else. But so what? He holds that if your dog shoots an arrow, then you're going to be a hayab. That would be the 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 the, the hayub. That, that, that would be a tzedorot. Ela leman damar ishu mishu mamono. But if you say that the hayub of fire is because it's your money, well, hold it. The dog belonged to him, but the fire didn't belong to him. He picked up some halala that had a fire underneath it. So therefore, if you hold it to mamono, hai esh lab mamono de ba'al kelevu. The esh does not belong to the Owner of the dog. Amal Khalish Lakish. Akhabi my askina. The Shri will say, no, we're talking about here. The Addiye Adduye. Where the actually the Kelev threw the Harara on the Gadish. Now, what does that mean? Al Harara, Mishalim, Nezik Shalim. The fact that he ate the biscuit, we know that's Nezik Shalim because that's the regularly regular uh, um, uh, Nezik of Shin. The Al Mekoma Gachelet. In the place where the gachelet landed and burned, so not because it spread, but Mishalim Hatsi Nezik, because that would be considered Sirorot, right? It came from the kawah of the of the dog, the place where it landed. And then on the spread in Echiram, you'll be Patur. <laughs> That's his answer. So again, the case is talking about where he ate the Harara, Harara Shin. We all agree you'll pay full Nezik. Sure. Then he threw the, uh, the Harara and it landed on a spot. That's Sirorot. And that will be Hatsi Nezik. From there, it spread. The Shagish says, it's not your mamon. It's not your mamon. 
and therefore you're not going to be hayab on the rest of the on the rest of the field, and therefore uh, um, uh, you cannot consider when it damaged uh, past that point um, uh, serot because um, serot was only mikoho and not what it, what happened uh, what happened after. Okay, so now the question is: Let's read Rashi over there. Rashi says. It's not his money. It's not considered either. After it landed, it went by itself. You can't say that he actually placed it on the ground because if you say he placed it on the ground, he paid Nezik Shalem because that would be normal. So you have to say he so threw it. it. He threw it, that would be Hatsi Nezik, and the rest of the field that it went on its own, that she says, you'd be at least according to the Shlakish. What does the Buchanan say? No. The Anacha Anuche. He actually placed it on the ground. So let's go review the laws. On the harara that he ate, well, that's shit. Of course, you pay full nezik. And on the place where he actually placed the gachlet on the ground, nezik shalim, because that's not a shinui, that is quite normal. And on the spread, meshalim hatsi nezik. Why does he hatsi nezik? Because the Yohanan holds hatsio, and then it's like an arrow. And then it's his dog that shot an arrow. And therefore, that's a nezik that, that's like serorot. That's a, the color of the dog. Now we get to the famous story. It's uh, one of the few places where the Gemara will mention uh, the holiday of Hanukkah. Mm. Coming up right over here. Mm. Very, very timely uh, Gemara. Tashema. Coincidence. Yeah, yeah, big coincidence. Right. Gamal. Taun Pishtan. Yeah, no, we understand. Gamal Taun Pishtan. You have a camel. And the camel has on its back Pishtan, flax. The camel is traveling to the Shutarabim. And the Pishtan went into the shopkeeper's store and got lit on fire. Ben de Roshid Hanbani. From the light, from the candle of the shopkeeper. He burnt the whole house down. Because his Pishtam uh, went into the domain of the Malabai. He left his candle outside and the Rishut Rabim and then he, the camel got lit. To pay for the Pishtam and the Bira. But if he put his Ner Hanukkah outside, Patur, why? Because he's allowed to put the Ner Hanukkah outside. So therefore, he has the shoe. If you say that what? That the fire is high because it's like your arrow. So we understand that when the Pishtan went into the store and it started to light uh, everything up, so the Hayav, the, the Bala Gamal is going to be Hayav. Hitzav de Gamalu, which means because that is the uh, of the the arrow of the of the camel, which means you are obligated to watch your camel. And now your camel shot an arrow. Why? Because the Pishtan went in, got lit, and then that fire went out. So even though the owner of the camel doesn't own the fire, it's not his mamon, but it's his arrow. It's Hitzio. Ospam, the camel went in. The camel's Pishtan got lit in the fire. And then what happened? It went out. So if you hold Ishu, 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 Hitzio, we understand why you're going to be Hayab. But if you say it's Hayab because of Mamon, the camel owner doesn't own the fire. Who owned the fire? This is the shopkeeper. So why are you going to be Hayab? The brother comes along and says, I'm the Kharish Lakish. What are we talking about over here? Where the Gamal actually stood in front of the Bira and burnt the entire Bira with the Shalhebet that was on his back. And therefore, that's considered 
Makoma Gahelet. He actually burnt it directly. That's not considered over here where it went on its own. It means the camel's back lit up because he had the Pishtan on it. And then he stood next to the Bira and he basically rubbed against the Bira. What happens? So he burnt it directly. So that's what that's not an inyan of uh, 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 issue of whose money it is. The camel directly damaged it. Mamash. And therefore, we don't look at that as ish. That's not considered ish anymore. That's considered mamash. He damaged it directly. That she says, That's what must put the chalet on the ground. And therefore, that's the reason why it's going to be Hayab in such a case. So the Gemara comes along and says, If we're talking about over here, if the Mesachseket, Emma Sefa, what does it say to Sefa? He put his net outside. He shouldn't have put his net outside. But if it's talking about over here where the animal actually took the fire and rubbed against the wall, why should you make the Hanbani totally hayab? The Gamal, Ba'ala Gamal, should also share in the in the payment. Am I hayab? Why is the Hanbani hayab? The Ma'asir was done by the Gamal. So the Gemara says, no, Mishamda, Mishamda. What happened with Mishamda? Where the camel uh, stood and he didn't move. And it was just the Pishtan was a lot on the back and uh, he didn't rub against it. So therefore the uh, Onus is going to be on the Baal Hanbani. He didn't go against the wall, he just stood there. So Gabra says, I'm the Sikhsecha. If the case over there is too much, he just stood, he should have moved. Which is all the more so the Hanbani should be put to the Baal Hanbani. Why? Because the Baal Hanbani should have moved this animal away. What is he just standing there? Was it a bus stop? He has to move away in order not to burn the uh, the, the, the house down. It was, pardon me, but it stood because it had to urinate. And therefore, the, the owner of the animal couldn't move it because it's not its fault. The animal's, uh, the, and therefore, you can't, you can't blame the owner of the camel for not moving his camel away. So the Gabbara comes along and says, Now, Resha, in the beginning of the Mishnah, when the Pishtah went into the store of the owner and got burned, Baal Gamal Hayab. Why is the Baal Gamal Hayab? You shouldn't have loaded your camel so much, causing your Pishtah to go into the store of the Baal Hanut. And if he's considered a Poshaya, you can't blame the store owner for having a light in his store. He's allowed to. He didn't do anything. Sefaq and Bani Hayab. But the Sefa, the Hanbani is guilty. Why? He should have put his nail outside. What are you doing? And therefore, and you can't blame the Bala Gamal for not moving his animal because he couldn't move his animal because he was doing his needs. Let's do a story. Guy lit a Gadish in a field. And there was a Gedi that was tied to the field, to the Gadish, to the. To, 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 to the uh, to the, uh, to the to the bundles, the eved samuklo, and there was also an eved over there. So you got three things here: you got the gadish, you got the gidi, and you got the eved. The nisraf emo, and the guy burnt everything: the gidi, the eved, and the gadish. That's uh, all three. Hayab, it's hayab to pay for the gadish, and it's hayab to pay for the gidi, uh, because. Um, uh, <laughs> Look at that she. Look at that she over here. Vaya gedi kafut ole gadish. Ve'emet samuk lo. V'nesraf imo hayab. A gedi va a gadish is hayab. The fish en lo din mita b'shvil ha'eved. Aha. Which means normally we have a law that if at the time that you damaged, you killed somebody, so we say you don't pay for damages because we have the law of kimle b'derava mine, which teaches us that you get the greater of the two punishments, and therefore you don't have to pay. Monetarily, but here we don't obligate the guy for killing the Evan. Why? He should have ran. He wasn't tied down to the field. Why didn't he run? So therefore, mm-hmm. 
אז לכן הוא חייב לשלם על הגדי ועל ה... על הגדיש. ועבד סרוגו, ונוסף עמו, חייב. However, עבד כפות לו, if the עבד was tied to the field, הוא גדי סמוך לו, and the גדי was סמוך, ונשרף עמו, פטור. He's פטור for the גדיש and the גדי, uh, but he's חייב, uh, okay. חייב בעיטה for the עבד. Because why? Because the law of קימלה בדרבה מיניה, the עבד couldn't run away. So therefore he's חייב for killing the עבד. It was going to be פטור for the monetary damages. Okay, now look at that sheet. עבד כפות לו, בגדיש סמוך וסמוך ומה בטול. אגדי ואגדיש. וואי, דקים לב בדרבה מיניה. שההורג עבד נהרג. כי כאילו עבד, זה דת פנטי שנאמר, נקום ינקם. ועדן הכת גדי, משום דמקמינה נקמן בגדי אחד ועבד אחד. We're talking about over here a case where there's one guy that owns the גדי and one guy that owns the עבד. The בגדיש ועבד, לקה לאוקמה האחי. When it comes to a גדיש ואין עבד, to say that one guy owns the גדיש and one guy owns the עבד, לקה לאוקמה האחי. דהג נאורך דמתא לשידורי אינשי עבדי לשמור גדישו. Right, normally it's the way to send your עבד to watch your גדיש. Normally it's the same guy that owns it. I did not have גבי עבד כפות וסמוך, נקד גבי גדי כפות וסמוך. Which means over here, we don't care whether the Gedi was, was, was tied. Here it says, It doesn't matter if it was Samukh. It would normally be Hayab on the Gedi because we don't say the Gedi should have ran away. But it's the point is, since above we talked about the Ebed Samukh, so we also gave a case of Gedi Samukh. But it's not the, the, the Gedi, if it wasn't for the fact that he killed the Ebed, he would be Hayab on the Gedi because we don't see how Gedi Hayab on the Gedi. לברוח, we don't see the condition of random way, but the point is over here in this case, let's review, רבותיי, let's review again, יאבי גדיש, אני יאבי גדי, סמוך לו, if he would have burnt both of those without any, he would be חייב, he would be חייב על הגדי, ועל הגדיש, למה על הגדי? because we don't say גדי should run, fine, but this case over here there was a אבן, and what was the אבן status? he was כפות to the field, so he couldn't run away, so he burnt the אבן, Once he burns the Ebed, Torah says, Nakom, Yenakim. It's Chayuv Mita on the Ebed. Once it's Chayuv Mita on the Ebed, you're patu for paying, touch the glucose of the law of Kim Le, Medaraba, Min Bish, Lama, Leman, Daman, Ishu, Mishu, Ha'etzio. I'm going back. According to Rabbi Yohanan, that says, Ishu, Mishu, Ha'etzio, Mishu, Ha'aki, Patur. That's why when you, when the guy lit the Gaddish, so you're Patur, from paying for the Gaddish and the Gedi when the Ebed was kafut. Why? Because since the Ish is considered Hitzio, so therefore it's like you shot an arrow and killed the, uh, 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 the Ebed, and therefore you have the Mita. And that's why you put to it from Tashlumi, because keep the Ebed Rabba, Amine. What's the law if your money kills somebody? You're not Chayab Mita. ממונו של האדם שהרג, שור שלך שהרג את הנפש. אתה חייב מיטה על זה? לא. אז אם אתה אומר, אם אתה אומר שאישו משום ממונו, אין פה חיוב מיטה על העבד. אז למה אומרים כי מנה בדרבה מיניה? זה ממונו שהרג. ממון של אדם שהרג, הוא חייב מיטה או לא? לא חייב מיטה. אז גם אמרנו מה פטור? אילו קטלטולי עבדה, אחינם אין לו חדה, זה כמו השור שלו. If his ox would have killed somebody, he would be פתוי. לא חיוב מיטה על דעת. עוד פעם, how could you tell me כימנה בדרבה מין, if you say it's משום ממו? No, very good. אמר לך... כן. מה תגיד, ממו נו? אמר לך, רבי שמעון בן נקיש, חבר'ה מעסקינן. She has seen the good fortune of it. Okay, yeah. The guy actually burnt the Ebed directly. That's not Ish anymore. That's already Mamash. She has seen Mamash. Fine. And therefore, it's not Medin Ish. They came to Medin Rabbi Amin, and then we say, Kino Rabbi Amin, Yeah, I came out of the memory. So what's the Hadush? Of course, if a guy takes a fire and burns the Ebed, of course it's Hayab. What's the Hadush? La Serikha, Begidi Dehad, Ve'Ebed Dehad. The Hadush of Mirrors has different owners. The Gedi belongs to one guy, and the Ebed belongs to another guy. And therefore, in this case over here, we still say, Kim Nebed Rabbi Meneh. Although I could have said maybe no. 
the guy who's owed the money can say, listen, pay me. I mean, Hayabita, Hayabita goes to the other guy. So you might have thought that you don't say Kimne B'derabamin when you have two different owners. Kamash Manali, you say Kimne even on two different owners. Rashi, Begedi, the Hadda, 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 Right? There's no Hayub Mita Mishun the Gedi. But he loses out because he killed the Ebed. But it's not my Ebed. It's Ebed Shalahir. Doesn't matter. Evantem Rabotai? Okay. No, Evantem is a gram talk. Sad it. Fami Mivini, we don't even know Mivini. He go to Abayim. Yeah, he go to Abayim. Ulaq. Right. No, I mean, we can go to Zedo, I mean, we can go to Abayim. No, it's so hard. A man who doesn't know the Gilgul, he doesn't know the Gilgul, he doesn't know the Gilgul, he doesn't know the Gilgul. What do you mean? Do you mean? Yes. I understand that I don't speak with you. Yes. Again, this is a good one. What do you mean? The Gilgul is the Gilgul. What is the Gilgul? It's the Gilgul. What is the Gilgul? What is the Gilgul? שוטה... דפתת, 9-3, דפתת למדנו שלושה דברים, דפתת למדנו על יורש, אם זה כלוקח או לא, שטריו אין מחלוקת, הידור מצווה עד שליש מצווה, זה גם בדפתת, דפתת, עמוד ב' זה דמשנה, השולח על ידי חלש שוטה בקטן, אז לכן למדנו את זה בדפתת, אתה שמה, זה גם בנ"ט. השולח את הבעירה ביד חילש שוטה בקטן. So you sent it על ידי חילש שוטה בקטן. פטור מדיני אדם וחייב בדיני שמיים. And what happened? I guess the, the חילש שוטה בקטן when it burnt somebody's field. So פטור מדיני אדם, but חייב בדיני שמיים. Now it's very thick enough מחייב, because it's חילש שוטה בקטן. בשלמה למען למען אישו משום חציו. If you want to say it's Mishum Hatsio, Hatsio the Hayrishu. It's the Hayrishu of the Hayrishu. And therefore, you cannot be Mechayev somebody uh, because of the Hayrishu of the Hayrishu. It's, uh, he doesn't have, uh, he doesn't have that. However, if you can say the man, the man, Mishum, 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 Mamono, Ilu Masal Shoro le Hayrishu of the Bekatan. Hachinami don't Mechayev? Let's say he gave you an ax to a Hayrishu of the Bekatan. Of course you'll be hayab. It's a moment for you. I'm not sure if it's in the hand of the hand. Of course you'll be hayab. Now we learned that any time you give mamon and mazik in the hands of somebody that cannot watch it, as a taposheya, as a country that says, Isho mishu mamono, why are you going to be patur if you gave it to the hand of the hand of the hand of the hand? You gave your money, which is damaging, to the hand of the hand of the hand. If you say it's because of hats, okay, that's not your hats. It's the hats of the hand of the hand of the hand of the hand. חיצות של חלק זאת אומרת, פטור. זאת אומרת, ממונו שלך, יהיה חייב. האתמר ענה, אמר שלום 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 It's only damaging because the Hanesh added the blowing. So it's not like you gave him a, a damaging uh, item. You're right. If you gave him an actual fire, because it's a, it's a damaging item. Wow. Because he holds what? What caused the damage? The holding of the of the Hanesh of the Katan. Which he had to do something. And therefore, that's not considered um, uh, uh, his damage. And Yohanan will say, that's the heads of the Hanesh, because he had to do it. 
הלב פה אותה קצת, הלב פה לא מחייב, עד למסה לגבזה סלתה, until he gave him, uh, let's say, <laughs> exactly, dry wood, הוא שרגה, and he gave him a, uh, a nerve. In this case over here, for sure the Moser is a Poshaya. Why? That's really the Rashi. But Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Afidu Shalabit Patur. Rabbi Yochanan Tamed Amar, Ishom Mishom Hachio. Vachy Hachio Nechereshem. So when is he Hayab? Gabza, Etzim Yemeshim Vesata, Etzim Ketanim Shachim, Zahar Peta Poshaya. Why is he Poshaya in such a case? Because for sure that's how he's going to cause gross negligence. Why, why is that gross negligence? Because he gave him, I guess, the whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. He gave him the fire. He gave him the wood. He gave him the, the fuel. They say uh, completely negative. Well, in the other case, what did he give him? He just gave him a, a flame. So then already, well, he has to hold on to it. Well, he doesn't have to hold on to this. I, I don't understand the difference yet. Rabbi Yohanan's if he gave him a shalhevet. No, 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 Seems like the arrows would be the first one of somebody else. He says, Shedefia en la chayeb et tapikeya elen ken letaver selefa al yedem ma'asab. Vidu be moser shalheb et tacheresh vegaram bat et chayeresh o selefa ma'asab shal chayeresh e ma'asub. Fine. What does it mean, ma'asab shal chayeresh? That he had to actually do something. He had to hold on to it. And in the second case, what did he give him? In the second case, he gave him everything. He gave him Gabaza, Selta, Ushraga. You're saying it definitely is minimal contribution at that point. It's like a normal win. So it's going to happen uh, uh, automatically. It's not his hour. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. Okay. Just read the note over here. Okay, very good. So that's the Gemara. Okay, I'd cut. I'd cut. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Actually, we know one more line of it. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Don't rush. Don't rush. I was testing you. I was testing you. You have to wait for it. When you said that, I was like, 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 I was a blighter that supports of Yohanna. That says what? Hatsio. Kiradi khti ki titse ish. Titse ma'atsma. Right. It's happening by itself. Yishalem ha mav'ir ita ba'ira. But it says ha mav'ir. What is this? He yatsa ma'atsma. But then the pasuk says ha mav'ir ita ba'ira. Shma mina ishum ishum hatsio. That even though it happens by itself, we consider as if he did it, like shooting an arrow. Matnita de tanya patah ha-katuv. In the beginning, the pasuk comes along and says, "Ki titze ish v'tziyem benizke gufo." But then it says, "Ham avir et abeira." Malicha ishu mishum hatsio rashi in the bottom. Titze me'atzma amash va'belekal ukmekra kashid diku atzmo gadisho shul abir. He didn't do it directly. Ella betok shelo he diki lit the fire in his area. But shall come atzma. But maybe no haki is called mafir et abeira. It's like he did it himself. Why? Say Hatsio. When it came, I'm going to dictate that it's a ish, mashman ma'atzma. When it came before, they carried him of it. Now, what's the case over there? And Hainu's a katu, a hayuva katu, a ta'adam, when it came ish, with shumshi nechshevet ki hatsh zarak. Because it's considered as if he, the arrow threw it himself. So it starts with when it came, I'm going to. Because the person says, it's a ish. But then it says he actually did it himself. 
נתיד של השווי של קציון. ביורפו, עד כאן, ברוך אדוני העולם. אמן ואמן. Somebody look for him, couldn't find it. Come back. Come back. Come back.